Sometimes when you plan for a particular type of video, everything goes left and sometimes in a good way because it helps entertain and educate you guys or at least put you on and give you a different perspective of how to look out for potential scams or mishaps. So here was the topic of today's video. I like to search for different pieces all over the internet that I feel might be potentially different to the content that I do on this channel. Now I'm not a jeweler. I don't run a jewelry business, nor, nor do I have an influx of inventory that I can use to develop new content. So, so I have to spend hundreds and thousands of dollars to be able to make this content to not only bring the eyes and bring the awareness to the channel, but put you guys onto interesting and entertainment content. This is an entertainment channel at the end of the Day with a little bit of an educational factor to it and today we're going to be educating you guys on how to not potentially get caught off of ebay because the purchase that i got for a significant discount as you can imagine ended up not being what it is let's roll my music so i can put you on to a little mishap that could potentially happen to you on ebay i'm kind of a big deal beautiful peoples, you know who it is, this is your boy, C to the U to the B to the A. This little mishap could have cost either of us at least $500. $500 is a lot of money to anyone. I don't care how much money you're getting, 500 bucks is 500 bucks, especially when you might be allegedly trying to get scammed out of that $500. Now, I'm not gonna put the blame 100% on the seller, Mm -hmm. But let's be clear, if you're selling these types of pieces and you got got, you should do a little bit more research. But hey, things happen, right? Thank God for eBay and PayPal protection. But I'm gonna put you guys on to how I got caught up in this mess in the first place. So in looking for different pieces for jewelry to make content and to add in my collection or potentially flip and sell, I was looking for men's jewelry that I haven't showcased on this channel. And what I haven't showcased on this channel a lot is designer jewelry. So I wanted to do something that kind of ties into everything I've been doing, the designer edge. So one of the brands that I decided to look up was David German, very popular in the 925 silver space. I'm now getting more into silver pieces. So I thought, hey, let me do something with a precious stone and David Yurman designer jewelry. Now, when you look at David Yurman jewelry or think of David Yurman jewelry, the thing that comes to my head is ripped jeans, distressed jean jacket or distressed boots, Hollywood rocker style, big hat with pins in them, a, a Miri Rip shirt or acid wash jeans, and then 925 silver jewelry. But these are people with paper, so they'll add precious stones to it. Now, David German does do actual diamonds in 925 silver, which I thought would be an interesting addition to not only my collection, but to show you guys on the video. So I happened to find an auction that was going on for a David German streamlined three row diamond ring, 925 silver, potentially pre-owned because it was an auction and the auction was climbing pretty quickly. So I put in a bid that I was like, there's no way I'm gonna win this for this cheap. And I ended up winning for sub $500, a David German three row streamline ring, which for me, right from rip, if you guys don't know what the streamline is, it's this. Look at the price tag on this puppy. So for me to get a sub $500, even used, Already, that's like a, hmm, whatever's going on in your business, if this money can potentially help you get out of any situation or you're trying to do a flip, I don't know the situation, but here we go. So I won the auction, paid it immediately, and I just got the package today. And truth be told, I've seen enough jewelry pieces to identify when things give me a little bit of a red flag. So I'm gonna show you multiple red flags on this piece. And one of the things to keep in mind when buying on eBay, which again, I'm very happy that there's those eBay protection plans and PayPal that the return process are very easy because this is going back and I'm gonna show you some examples of why it's going back and how they might potentially get you. Now, before we jump into some close-up shots, keep in mind, pretty professional eBay buyer. So I always look at the ratings, I read reviews. This person had great reviews. It wasn't just like three or four positive feedback, it was several hundred positive feedbacks, which also kind of cause a concern to me at this point, as a consumer, how many people may have gotten got, or again, allegedly, if they didn't know and they're selling these pieces thinking that they're getting a phenomenal deal, they may not see that they've been getting got. Again, don't know anybody's situation. You're not getting me. So I'm gonna show you some close-up shots and some examples of red flags that I've noticed on this ring, which is the three row David Yerman streamline, which is right over here. Gorgeous ring, very, very nice. And based on the description, it just listed three row David Yerman diamond streamline ring. So, I mean, you said David Yerman, 
You said diamond, you said streamline, there's nothing else that I need to ask, right? Keep that in mind. So let's go into some close-up shots and I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of why I know that this is a David Yerman replica. But let's take a look. So I use standard resources that anybody else would use, the internet, comparing pictures which can go a long way. Now I'm gonna give you some close-up shots as best as I possibly can to show you the different features of this ring that made me feel mm -mm, something is rotten in the state of Denmark. So let me put the black gloves on. So here is the David Yerman ring. So the first thing that I noticed when opening this package is the beautiful setting and the stone how bright and super shiny they are. Now, usually designers on the high-end spectrum use VS quality stones, so I'm not too surprised by the super shininess of the diamonds. However, the shininess of the diamonds wasn't what caught my attention, was the color and the kaleidoscope effect that these stones had right from rip. It was ultra shiny and very sparkly like a kaleidoscope. And if you guys follow my channel, you know that that kaleidoscope fire resonates with one type of stone. But let's not jump the gun yet. The first thing that caught my attention was the setting. And I'm gonna put a side-by-side -side picture of the David Yerman ring off their actual website and the setting of this, and I'll try to do it as close up as possible. But in doing a side-by-side -side comparison and up close pictures of both, you can see that the setting is different between the David Yerman Pave setting and this particular setting. Not that this is done poorly by any means, but it's not the same as the David Yerman. So most of the David Yerman pieces on 925 Silver has that nice black background, that oxidation type look in the silver to give it that rock star vintage distressed kind of look. This doesn't have that. This has an overly polished look, which could have been done with aftermarket polishing, but between the stones, like in depth like that, I don't know, but that's one. Secondly is the lip. So if we look at the outer lip of this particular ring, and I'll put the side by side by David Yerman, this particular lip is almost flush with the actual diamonds, as opposed to the David Yerman, which has more of a profound and indented type lip separating it from the diamond, kind of giving it like a little protection, like a cell phone case over the diamonds. Now, thirdly, is these grooves and this design style here. Now you see that they did do black oxidation style look in the back, very similar to that oxidized silver or that black and silver kind of motif. This one is kind of faint comparatively to the David German one. Polish was something that would have gotten everything else, that polish wheel would have gotten in there and lightened that up substantially as well. So maybe that is the case as far as polish. Over here, do not match up with how David Yerman would have produced its piece. Now, this piece does have the David Yerman signature on the inside. And even the signature caused a bit of a red flag. That's gonna be difficult for me to record, but I'll try my best to give you some detailed shots. But the David Yerman signature on the inside also caused some red flags. Just looked a little bit inconsistent from the signatures that I've seen previously. So that also caused a red flag as well. Now, with all those things being said, the ultimate test and what really kind of upsets me about this process is we have a lot of educated consumers out here, right? So if somebody bought this piece as an educated consumer is pull out their diamond tester. And traditionally, most people have those cheap $20 eBay diamond testers, or maybe something a little bit more expensive like this Presidium diamond tester, right? So what happens is they're gonna see those stones. They're like, yo, I purchased a diamond ring, so I'm gonna make sure that it tests as diamond. We got our diamond tester ready, and what happens? They get their diamond tester, they put on the stone, Diamond. That's it. There's nothing else to question. They'll go to another couple other stones. Diamond tested. There's nothing else to question. But unfortunately, not everybody has a more advanced diamond tester like the Gem Oro Testarossa. Now the Testarossa does get a little bit finicky when it's low on battery. This has been charging for over two days and generally accuracy is pretty decent when it's fully charged. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this with the verbal diamond tester which tests for moissanite as well as diamonds and sapphires. So when we do that here. Moissanite. Yeah. Moissanite. Remember that kaleidoscope fire and brilliance that I was talking about that I saw visually? Let's try another stone. Moissanite. Moissanite again. Let's try another stone. Moissanite. Yeah. So of course it's gonna pass the traditional diamond tester because we know our moissanites pass a standard diamond tester. But when there's a moissanite tester that audibly indicates what the stone is and all the other red flags, if it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it, its ass is watertight like a duck, it's a duck. Now to reconfirm the accuracy of the diamond tester, I have here some of the tennis braces that your boy is selling on Instagram. If you want to check out, these are 14 karat gold natural diamonds. Free plug. 
So this is a small 3mm 14 karat diamond tennis bracelet with natural stones in it. No matter if it's lab or natural, it will still come up as what? Diamond, right? So just to check the accuracy between what we just witnessed this screaming moissanite on an actual tennis bracelet. So as you can see here, we have the two options here, which is a Moissanite David Yerman three row streamline 925 silver replica with a seller with high ratings that either is being scammed by somebody or is trying to scam a consumer with Moissanites in it. And since Moissanites ever so popular and people are starting to learn that they can be manipulated to the common consumer that isn't aware, this is the bad part of a Moissanite, unfortunately. Not everybody's an educated consumer and watches our channels, can potentially be scammed for hundreds of dollars thinking that they're getting one thing when it's completely something different. As you can imagine, not what I ordered, not what was described. They almost got your boy, but guys, keep in mind that, but keep this in mind. This is why a lot of jewelers and jewelry brands and people are skeptical buying from jewelers because they're saying, yo, this is diamond. It looks like a diamond. It's sexy and all that. But then it ends up being something like a moissanite and now you feel like you got juxt. And this is why lab diamonds and moissanites get a bad rap because people use them allegedly with intentions to potentially mislead or misadvertise what they're selling. So thanks to eBay and PayPal, this is going back to its rightful owner. Maybe they were scammed upon and they just didn't know. I'm not gonna put them on heavy blast now, but if they get back to me on some spicy shit, just be on the lookout, guys. If the price is too good to be true, get it tested and double tested. I know it's gonna be a little inconvenient and out of your way, so that you can either invest in an actual moissanite tester or take it to a local pawn shop that may have a better diamond tester than those pencil ones you can buy online so you don't get got. I love y'all mother suckers from the heart. Let me know what you guys think and I'll see y'all snitches next time. You know who it is, biggest in the game. Smooches.